I'm so sorry. I just really love books. <laughs> okay. Hey everyone. We are in the middle of a series called Big Picture, and in it, we've been talking about the life of this pretty important guy in the Bible named Joseph. Now, we'll get to more on him later, but what you need to know is this. His story was crazy. It was cray, y'all. Like, grab yourself some movie theater popcorn, butter, 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 a little bit of salt. Okay, here we go. He found himself in the middle of some really unbelievable, difficult, and even scary circumstances. And while we all get the privilege of knowing how amazing his story ended up, at the time, he certainly didn't see the bigger picture. All he could see was what was happening right in front of him then and there. I have to wonder if being in the middle of all those crazy and painful circumstances ever made Joseph ask a question that I think a lot of us ask when we find ourselves in similar situations. What is the point? I mean, honestly, haven't we all been there? You go through a situation in your life that you do not understand or you find yourself in a circumstance that you don't wanna be in and you're so disappointed with the way your life looks and you think to yourself, what is the point of all this? Why do I have to go through any of it? Why does it have to be this way? Now, when I was in middle school, my parents split up and it was really, really hard for me and my siblings to deal with because it was not a smooth separation. And their messy separation led to a messy divorce. And then their messy divorce led to lots of messy, difficult years in my family where it was hard to imagine things ever being good again. And there were lots of nights that I spent crying over all of this just craziness. And I would ask God over and over and over, what is the point of all this. Why do some families get to work out and be happy while other families don't? And when we were in the middle of all that nonsense, it was impossible to imagine that things could ever be good again because we just couldn't see the bigger picture. We couldn't understand that God had a bigger story in mind for us. Now, maybe you haven't had an experience exactly like mine, but a lot of you probably have felt this way. And maybe for you, it was at school. You thought, why do I need to learn about the French Revolution or the periodic table or long division? When am I ever gonna need to use this stuff in real life? What is the point? Or maybe you felt this way at home. Your parents make you do the chores and play with your siblings or wake up early on a Saturday morning and you absolutely do not understand why. I mean, every time you're picking your clothes up off the floor or taking your baby sister outside or being forced to get up early on the weekend, you're thinking to yourself, what's the point? Maybe you've asked yourself that question when you found yourself dealing with disappointment, when you didn't make the team, or you got ghosted by a friend, or you got gossiped about at school. You just couldn't understand why you had to deal with all the pain and disappointment of it. You couldn't see the bigger picture or the point of the situation. Or maybe it was something really and truly painful. Maybe you watched a loved one struggle through an illness. Maybe they even passed away. Or maybe you've dealt with things like anxiety or depression, and no matter what you do, you just can't seem to shake it. Now maybe your parents are going through a divorce, or you've been placed in foster care, or someone close to you hurt you in a way that you don't know how to come back from. Those things certainly make you wonder, what is the point to all of this? Maybe you even feel this way about your faith. You come to church, you crack open a Bible a couple of times, you say a few prayers here and there, but nothing really feels different. And you keep trying to connect with God, but nothing seems to happen, and you're left wondering, what's the point? The truth is, we all experience difficult things throughout our lives. And when we're in the middle of those difficult things, we often ask that same question, what is the point? We don't see any good in the situation and we don't experience the outcome that we hope for. And we don't see any part of the big picture, we just see our pain. When we feel that way, it's nearly impossible to believe that anything good could come from it, isn't it? Well, that brings us right back to our pal, Joseph. So grab your movie theater popcorn, here we go. His life is recorded in the portion of the Bible called the Old Testament. And that's the first half of the Bible written before Jesus came to the earth. So remember how we said Joseph found himself in the middle of a lot of difficult and painful and frustrating circumstances? Well, after his own brothers threw him down a well and then he was sold off into slavery, Joseph was taken to Egypt to work for this guy named Potiphar. 
And just as things were starting to look up for Joseph, he was put into a really difficult situation, falsely accused of something he didn't do, and he was thrown into prison as punishment. Talk about unfair. I mean, can you just imagine how Joseph must have felt sitting there in prison? I know what I'd be thinking. It'd be something like, God, you have got to be kidding right now. I mean, things couldn't get any worse for me. How long is it supposed to last? What is the point of any of this? Now, I think these are definitely fair questions for Joseph to have asked. I mean, he tried so hard to do the right thing and remain faithful to God. And this was where it got him, in jail? I mean, if I were Joseph, I definitely would have had a hard time seeing the big picture. Now, thankfully, God always has the bigger picture in mind. Now what Joseph couldn't see as he sat in that prison was that God was working behind the scenes. He was working for Joseph's good, even during his pain. Joseph just couldn't see it yet. Okay, so you see, while Joseph actually was in jail, he wasn't the only one that was in there. Uh, I'm looking for, did somebody have my bread? Oh, here, okay. So while he was in jail, he met two other people that were in there with him. There was a baker. You can probably guess what a baker does. A baker makes bread. And he also met a cupbearer. But the cupbearer, that's not a role that we really hear about in our current day. So basically, Pharaoh's cupbearer was a really trusted person who served him drinks to make sure that it wasn't poisoned. He would do that, you know, by drinking some of it. It's poisoned! So if it was poison, the cupbearer would die instead of the pharaoh. Oh man. What Joseph didn't know yet was that these two guys, the cupbearer and the baker, were gonna play a much bigger role in this story. Now let's take a look at what happened. While they were in prison, Pharaoh's cupbearer and baker each had a dream one night, and each dream had its own meaning. When Joseph saw them the next morning, he noticed that they both looked upset. Why do you look so worried today, he asked them. And they replied, we both had dreams last night, but no one can tell us what they mean. At first glance, this doesn't seem all that remarkable of a story, right? So two guys had a couple of weird dreams. That's not all that important, right? Wrong! You see, at the time, dreams were believed to be predictions about what might actually happen in the future. So often, when people had weird dreams, they would seek out someone who could help them figure out the meaning so that they could understand what was coming. And Joseph knew that God could help him interpret their dreams. So he listened really carefully and interpreted them as God showed him what they meant. Joseph told the cupbearer that his dream meant the Pharaoh was going to restore him to his position in three days. Yay, cupbearer, you did it, man. And then Joseph predicted that the baker's dream meant that in three days the Pharaoh was gonna kill him. Not great news. I would much rather be the cupbearer in this scenario, wouldn't you? Sorry, baker. Either way, after Joseph helped these two guys understand their dreams, he had just one request for the cupbearer. When he got restored to his position with the Pharaoh, he would mention Joseph and help him get out of prison. Let's take a look at what happened next. Pharaoh's birthday came three days later, and he prepared a banquet for all his officials and staff. He summoned his chief cupbearer and chief baker to join the other officials. He then restored the chief cupbearer to his former position so he could again hand Pharaoh his cup. But Pharaoh impaled the chief baker just as Joseph had predicted when he interpreted his dream. Pharaoh's chief cupbearer, however, forgot all about Joseph, never giving him another thought. Okay, I think there are two really important things to note about this passage. First, everything God told Joseph would happen did happen. Really sorry, Baker. And second, even after all that, Joseph was forgotten. The cupbearer didn't keep his word, and so Joseph remained in prison. I mean, can you imagine how hopeless Joseph must have felt after that? He probably thought this was his last chance to be released from prison. And we can only assume that once again, he found himself asking, what is the point of all this pain and all this suffering? Nothing is ever going to change. And for a while, that probably seemed true. Because as the Bible tells us, it took a full two years for the cupbearer to finally remember Joseph. But Joseph didn't know everything that was happening, all that God was doing in those years. He couldn't yet see the bigger picture. I mean, can you really blame Joseph for probably feeling down about his situation? Can you blame him for not paying attention to the bigger picture that God was creating? I mean, he was in prison for two whole years. That's an incredibly long time to be wondering what God was up to. Think about it this way. 
Do you even remember what dances were trending two years ago? I mean, can you imagine being in prison for that long, feeling alone and forgotten? Well, that was a situation that Joseph was in. But two years later, the Pharaoh himself has a dream that no one could interpret. And it was then that the cupbearer finally remembered a guy he met in prison who was really good at interpreting dreams. And just like that, things turned around for Joseph. He got his chance. The Pharaoh called on him to interpret his own dreams and God helped Joseph to do it. So let's take a look at what happened after that. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has revealed the meaning of the dreams to you, clearly no one else is as intelligent or wise as you are. You will be in charge of my court and all my people will take orders from you. Only I sitting on my throne will have a rank higher than yours. Finally, after all of the struggle and suffering, after slavery and imprisonment and abandonment, Joseph finally got the good news that seemed like it would change his life for the better. And it was about time, right? But here's the thing. This isn't about Joseph finally getting good news. This isn't even about his happy ending or the nice promotion he got. It's about the bigger picture. What Joseph didn't realize during that time in prison was that God was writing the bigger story. Joseph didn't see that right there and then in the middle of that painful and difficult circumstance, he was positioned to do something great, something only he could do. Joseph's story was painful and filled with problems, but through those problems, God was creating a better future for Joseph. Joseph just had to be willing to trust that God could use him right where he was. That even during Joseph's pain Pain and problems, God was working behind the scenes for his good. And the same can be true for you. We may never understand why we're dealing with the things we're dealing with or why we are facing our circumstances, but we can trust that just like there was for Joseph, there is a bigger picture for us. And while creating our bigger picture, God is working for our good. And that good may not always look the way we think it will. And it certainly didn't for Joseph and we may never actually figure out why we had to go through the tough things that we had to go through. But when we trust God right where we are, we can trust that he's working toward what is best for us, even if we can't see it or don't understand it. In other words, when you can't see the bigger picture, trust that God is working for your good. So how do we do that? Well, instead of struggling to find the point in our pain, how do we trust that God is working for our good? I think we can start with these steps. First, exercise faith. On a daily basis, and maybe even sometimes on an hourly basis, choose to believe and trust that God is good and that he has everything under control. In those moments when you don't feel like you believe or when the pain is just too much, say something like this over and over and over until you start to believe it. God, you are good no matter what, and you have everything in your control. Second, look for the good. Now, while you're in your difficult situation, it's normal to wanna to just rush past the problem, but sometimes when you pause and take a step back, you can actually learn something about yourself and others. And sometimes you can even grow in the process. And while you won't always see the ways that God is working for your good, you can still make a choice to look for it. And you can even look back on the times when God worked for your good, even when you didn't realize it at the time. Third, seek encouragement. When you lose sight of the truth that God is working for your good, lean into someone else. Ask them to tell you a story of when God was working for their good, even when they couldn't see the bigger picture. Use their experience to encourage you during difficult times. So remember, when you can't see the bigger picture, trust that God is working for your good. As you head out today, think about this. What's one situation in my life right now that I don't understand the point of? Still poisoned.